Good morning, Harrow Moms. All right, it is Thursday. We got to get this party started. I'm waiting for my girl Kelly to get on. Kelly, hop on, Mama. Uh, we, we have a really awesome, awesome question to ask you guys or just to discuss with you. And it's something that we hear a lot when it comes to uh, our hero moms and the things that they're struggling with. So we were talking about, we've talked about this many, many times. And we want to make sure that you guys get uh, some understanding there uh, with the people who come, pop on. Hey, Tina. Good morning, baby. Um, Kelly's going to be hopping on in just a second. There she goes. Hey, 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 hey. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Hey. <laughs> oh, let me do this. And last time my sound was better after I put my earphone on. I put it echoed Ear, for me. Pod. There we go. See, there it goes again. Uh, is, it, is it echoing? Yes. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. It's soft. Um, <laughs> Masia is on. Masia from England. Hey, baby. Mwah. We need to schedule a call, me and you, Masia. So let's do that this week. All right, so just coming off of a High Performance Academy weekend, still totally amped and excited from the stuff that we learned. <sighs> yes. Um, let's get our Thursday started. So we crush it today, you guys. That's what we want. We want to feel the day. All right, let's take three deep breaths in and out. And go as deep as you can. Get in that gut. Fill it all the way up in the lungs and then let it out. I hope you guys do that with us for real. I mean, it, it makes a difference. I feel so good right now, just clear. Um, Kelly, we do gra gratitudes right now. What are you grateful for today? I am grateful for uh, my bed. It's comfortable right now. Uh, <laughs> um, having slept on, you know, a different one most of last week. Um, but I, apparently I slept better there. Because right now I'm not sleeping too well. Um, uh -oh. oh, I'm not quite sure why, but um, but my bed's comfortable, so I can lay there and just, you know, rest and meditate myself back to sleep when my cat's not all over me. So uh, <laughs> so every hour on the hour last night, I was like, okay, all right, I am thankful for my bed. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, well, well, that's great. I love that. I think that that's so key. We get into sort of our, it kind of, kind of leads into what I'm grateful for. Because we get into our routines, we get into our habits and the things that we become accustomed to and the things that we're familiar with. And just being in a place where you're familiar sort of allows other senses to start um, kicking in, right? So maybe, Kelly, now that you're at home and you're in your own bed and you're safe in a secure environment, your brain allows you to start like, it's a safe place to let my mind wander and think about <laughs> things right. and contemplate, whereas that... When you were out of town, it's like, just stay here, stay home. Yes. Stay what, what we're doing, right? <laughs> yeah, I also ran um, out of CBD, sometimes. so I'm, that might have something to do oh. with it. <laughs> oh, that could definitely have something yes, to do with yes. it. Good morning, Rebecca. Miss you. Are you still doing Tai Chi? Erin is every single day. Uh, you guys need to get together and do like a little Tai Chi reunion or something. <laughs> have a little Tai Chi off. <laughs> Tina, I'm grateful for my car this week. I'm without it due to my transmission is out oh, when we're inconvenienced with by not having something we have mm -hmm. all the time gosh we it is an opportunity for us to really be grateful uh for something that we sometimes just wrote don't even think about <clears throat> so i can't stand car problems <laughs> no. they're so stressful <laughs> um, and i'm sure you've got great people in place who are helping you out with that all right for what for me what i'm grateful for is exactly what i was talking to kelly about just now just routines um, I'm realizing the routines are things that help us get our day started right, help us win moment by moment throughout our day. So if we have a solid morning routine, then we win the morning. Then we have our time blocked out throughout the day, the things we know that are important for us to achieve today, and we know what we're going to be doing in those time blocks, then we win each time block. And every time we have a win, we we just feel more energized, more positive, more excited, happy about our day, happy about our life, and the and the way that we feel the day, the way that we interact with others, the way that we engage with what we're doing, just knowing and understanding each step of the day 
is a new stepping stone to get to where we want to go by the end of the day, another day, check a mark <laughs> yeah. that we achieved towards our legacy. And then pretty soon that whole, that day becomes a whole week and a whole month. And then another year that you have created a solid, solid foundation to get you to the next level, closer to that legacy that you're building out. Good morning, Mari. Hey, beautiful. Hey, good morning. Um, so, the, so I'm grateful for morning routine. Yes. That's what grounded and, uh, me. We talked about that. I think it was Tuesday. What's today? Thursday, Tuesday. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. So yeah, it is very grounding. It's very grounding. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so we have an awesome question that I'm super excited to discuss with you guys because I see this happening so much. It's happened to me a kajillion times. Uh, we've talked about it with Hero Moms time and time again. It's a, it's a constant issue that comes up in conversation um, with recurring Hero Moms as well as new Hero Moms that come in. I just think it's a topic, period. Especially now that we're getting older. I'm 48. I'll be 49 this year. Uh, same with Kelly. Same with Michelle. And a lot of you guys out there who aren't to school with, you're right there with me in that, in that um, where you're at age-wise. And so you may be experiencing some of the things that we're talking about. Like our bodies change, right? Our bodies are changing. I can't just do what I used to do when I was 20. Um, I feel a little pooch coming on. I'll just skip oh. a meal and I drop 10 pounds. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And that's so good so for you, too. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, metabolism is just completely different. We learn uh, that our metabolism changes over the years for multiple different reasons. So the question of the day is, well, I guess it's not really, well, it's kind of a question. I want to lose weight, but I don't want to give up the foods and drinks I love. How do I do that? How do I do, how do I lose weight when I, without giving up the stuff that I want? Or how do I, you know, how do I find like, like that happy balance so I don't step into that place of deprivation for some people when they're feeling deprived, when they... When they have this fear that they're going to lose something that they enjoy and love, um, they avoid taking that action. They won't do it because they're because they don't want to they don't want to lose the thing that they're emotionally attached to. So it's a really solid question, and uh, we know as we age, metabolism drops ten percent every decade. So from where we were when we were in our twenties, you know we're. 30 percent <laughs> slower metabolism at this age about to hit 40 percent slower on my that's almost half of the speed of my metabolism that's gone down there's different ways to level that up again um but what we know is we can't do things the same we can't we have to understand our bodies we have to understand um what's going on physiologically if we really want to make those choices, we're probably eating a lot more bad things because we've had more years, different kinds of bad things, <laughs> right. right? Because we've had a lot more years to create those bad habits and emotional attachments to foods that aren't good for us. Good morning, Jody. Hey, uh, Jody. So that accumulation uh, over time as well. So we'll talk about those things. Um, but there, there are kind of three main points that I want to hit on this with you guys when it comes to I want to lose weight, but I don't want to give up the foods or drinks that I love. The biggest you know, ones are like the savory foods. Um, some have sweet food attachments. Um, some have alcohol attachments. Like they love their girls' night out. They don't want to give up their wine or their, their weekend beer or whatever it is. And you know, those are kind of like those are kind of things that we've earned, right, as we get older to, to be able to do. Like, when we're kids, we, we can't go out on girls' night out. Like, we're too, we like, Mom, can you take me to girls' night out at the movie? Like, <laughs> it's not the same, right? Um, so we, we've kind of earned those uh, cocktail nights and um, beer and football Sundays, if that's your thing, or whatever it is. So it's kind of like, I don't want to give that up because then I feel like I'm giving up something that I've earned as well. So it's kind of how we look at it, right? So um, my three points, the first one I want to touch on is addiction. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking like, um, you know, like you got to go into rehab kind of addiction, not crazy like that. Um, although it could be that extreme for some people. Um, it was that way for me so much so that I was obese. Uh, and, you know, uh, obesity is definitely a sign of needing to uh, break an addiction. <clears throat> There's something very wrong going on inside of a person who's obese that they have not figured out how to deal with. Um, now, I'm talking about an obese person who's not doing anything to change uh, their health. And I'm speaking from, a, you know, personally being in that place. I was broken inside and turning to things externally, 
hoping that they would fix me and never finding a solution and just being more and more depressed about being stuck in that place. So I found escape. When you don't know how uh, to deal with something, you're not equipped, you're not looking for help, you're not asking for help, um, and you're not doing anything yourself except expecting something um, bippity-boppity-boo kind of magic business to jump into your life and rescue you, uh, you, you turn to whatever you have access to to numb that pain, that hopelessness, that fear that nothing's ever going to change. And for me, that was food. Kelly, did you ever have something like that? What was your, I know you have, what was yours? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, and really it leads into another word for that too, is the emotional eating. You know, it's, it's, you're addicted to that because you're covering something up and Lord knows that I covered a lot up. So, um, you know, I, I love my wine and there, there were times that I turned to that, um, as a coping mechanism, um, you know, at a time in my life, uh, food, I, I have, and you know, I'm not afraid to say this. I'm not ashamed to say this because it's just who I was, but I used to buy cans of frosting and literally just sit there and eat the whole thing. You know, I felt bad about it afterwards, and then I'd go out and run, you know, five miles or something really hard, you know, and tell myself how stupid <laughs> I was and what an idiot I was. You know, it's, it, it was just cyclical, but those are the types of things that, that you're doing to, to fill that void or to not deal. So you have an addiction to something because you're avoiding something. You're avoiding feelings. You're avoiding, you know, maybe taking big steps somewhere because of those feelings. Um, you know, and sometimes when you are trying to break that cycle too, and this has happened to me and I know, um, probably you Paula and most of our hero moms deal with this. It's, they see all these pounds starting to come off and then they're, they're like so happy. They want to celebrate. So we celebrate with food, you know, we're like, yeah. And even though they're celebrating with the good food that we teach them, it's like they, it's overdoing it a little bit. And I've done that too. I've had way too much rice or, you know, whatever, um, you know, whatever that might be. But instead, I mean, we're taught that from a small age. Oh, here, if you go, if you go pee pee on the body, I will give you an M&M. Well, I was a fat kid. <laughs> you know, we're, we teach that and we learn that um, from a very, very young age. So it's, it's breaking, it's breaking that cycle. And sometimes you have to break it a couple times before it stays broken. It's, it's a process. And I, I think everybody goes through it. It's just something different. Uh, it's teaching yourself to reward yourself with something else, whether it's, you know, uh, a special day out somewhere or an outfit or something new for yourself, a new ring, a new, new little piece of jewelry, maybe some earrings or something, instead of saying, I'm going to have this. Um, it's, it's trial and error and, and you have to give yourself a little grace to learn because you don't know these things and the things you don't know, you have to learn and we learn through repetitive actions. So, and, but yes, uh, that frosting, I've gone through frosting stages and I'm not going to say I've never gone back to that, but, um, I'm wiser now. So <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Gail. Good morning, Heather. Thank you ladies for joining us. We're talking right now about how do we lose weight uh, without giving up foods and drinks that we love. And the first point I talked about was addiction. And addiction being the type of, it's an addictive behavior, but there's also a chemical reaction that goes on as well. So it's, there's no, it, it, there's no um, accident. It's not an accident that we choose specific certain things. When we have an addiction, we choose foods specific kinds of foods when we are um, having an emotional negative uh, experience with something or you know it it might not even feel like dramatic in terms of negativity it could just be boredom mm -hmm. you know it could just be something that we're we're in that place of idleness where we're where we're where we're absent where experience and feeling and meaning is absent and we just kind of like why am I here? Like, what is this? Right. What is the purpose of right now even? And we can't just even be quiet and still with ourselves. And so we turn to something to give us a feeling. And the feeling we're looking for is joy or happiness or um, something positive. So we'll choose a food that gives us that feeling chemically. Sugar! Something goes off in the brain. <laughs> Sugar! Something goes off in the brain. 
and uh, when we experience almost like well, we need, we do know that sugar is gives us the same kind of chemical reaction um, that like as heroin, heroin yeah. does. Not that we yeah. know, but <laughs> that's what's the it's science. Been, it's been scientifically <laughs> proven. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Shelly, my little second cousin, Shelly's on. Oh. Hey, Gina, how are you, baby? So that's what's going on there. So then the the addiction comes because we are um, finding something that gives us that release of that negative experience, whether it be a kind of neutral negative, like just kind of like purposeless negative or an extreme negative. Yes, Jody, like stress, yeah. stress, very, very negative. That is absolutely something that someone is going to want to escape um, and find a way out of experiencing that. So we're either... We're either finding, we're either in a moment where we don't feel anything and we want to feel something or we're feeling something very extremely negative or even mildly negative and we don't want to feel that. So how, so we're thinking, our brain is like, go to the thing. Our brain is like, oh my gosh, <laughs> something bad is happening. I have to save you. Right. And what it, what it remembers that you've turned to in the past that's helped you have a positive experience it urges you. That's why we get those cravings, right? Um, it urges you, go to that thing. Go to the cupcake. Go to the soda. <laughs> go to the wine. Go to the chips. Um, go to the thing that gives you that release uh, so that you no longer have to be in the state of, of either purposelessness, of, of not feeling a positive emotion or something negative. Right. And then we start getting those <clears throat> neural pathways just like, like dug in super deep, right? So it's just like, subconsciously happening at that point right. you don't even know like you're sitting there like a bag of chips gone you're like holy what the like i know i shouldn't be eating this stuff it's not good for me especially at 49 years old right why did i just pound that bag of chips um and and it's just you know you don't even realize it's happening so you have to be really really thoughtful if you're you know trying to go for something so that's the addiction side mm -hmm. of it and then that other piece that kelly was talking about avoidance that's my second point <laughs> Hey, I just want to say something yeah, about uh, what Jody said about stress and and the negative mm -hmm. feelings that you're talking about because not only not only are you um, using the food you know to to create that good feeling for yourself because you want to feel good stress and negative feelings cause a, this huge cortisol dump so not only did you just mm -hmm. eat that entire bag of chips you have just dumped a ton of cortisol into your body because it's that fight or flight that we want to do and your body wants to run. So it's getting ready to go run. And instead we're sitting there doing this. And now what that cortisol does, especially for women our age, is it settles right in that middle. That's where that fluff pocket comes from. And sometimes it's bigger than a fluff pocket. So, um, and that cortisol just adds to that, especially if we're not you know, running like our body, like our intuition, from caveman days is telling us to do. We're just going, okay, I'm gonna feel better because I'm eating this sugar or I'm eating this, these chips. So you've got double action going on. We could do a whole nother thing on stress, but <laughs> I just wanted to add that. Yeah. I think about that sometimes like, you know, oh my God, like that adrenaline rush, that is cortisol. That's like, oh my God. There, there's so many things going on, right, in the body. The brain is telling you one thing and because you're at that subconscious level, you're not challenging it. You know, you're not having that presence to challenge that because you're just like zoned out, right? right. Um, but the other thing is like you're putting all these toxic, toxic things into your body. You're having all these toxic chemicals released into your body from the cortisol and the stress that you're feeling if that's what's driving that addictive behavior. And the only way your body knows how to protect you and all those toxins are in is to surround it with fat. So uh -huh. it takes like fat just goes, oh my gosh, toxins. Yeah. <laughs> It just like covers it up, hugs it. It's like, okay, let me take it down in this hole over here. And it's like, I'll go in the belly pocket. That'll be a good safe place. There's lots of room there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it just sits there and literally could sit there for years, years if we don't do stuff to get the, the excess fat off of our body. And it just piles up and piles up and piles up and piles up over time. So our body's trying to protect us, but like there's mixed signals. That's why we can't just be on autopilot. We cannot be on autopilot if we want to live an intentional life. If we want very specific results and outcomes in our life, we cannot be on autopilot. So then we go into that avoidance piece. We've created coping mechanisms over the course of our lives to deal with negative emotions, right? So 
what ends up happening is when we were, you know, maybe a little tiny kid, uh, some something negative happened, and for a little kid's, you know, world, whatever they have access to, that's what they go for. So sometimes it might be just shutting down. Sometimes it might be grabbing food. Uh, sometimes it might be hurting themselves. Uh, it just it just could be different kinds of things. But the point is, is that we aren't stepping through the difficulty of uh, acknowledging those negative emotions, um, going within to understand how can we sort of unpack that and really sort of dissect that. A kid is, just, you know, they're not mature enough to understand how to do that. So they're going to create, this is why it's so important as parents that we create safe environments where kids can express and not feel threatened about expressing because of our fears of not knowing as a parent how to deal with those things because they'll create coping mechanisms that aren't going to be healthy and that they won't understand how to undo later until their life is falling apart in a specific area. They can't, they can't develop relationships, right? They have no self-belief. They can't hold a job. You know, different things like that develop. So we have to be able to not avoid. We have to be able to just take a moment and allow ourselves to feel the negative emotion and not think that it's going to kill us, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like, it's not wrong, it's not bad to feel a negative emotion. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a sign. I'm not saying sign, like woo-woo sign. Like it's, it's a, it's an opportunity for us to better understand ourselves, to better understand the world around us, to better, to develop better um, abilities to to deal with life in general you know just think about everything every single struggle that you could not avoid that you had to figure out a way every single one of those struggles helped you be a stronger person in some way yes intentional with every choice gina absolutely and that seems it can be very exhausting sometimes that's why you have to constantly have things in place that keep your energy up like good food, good support, um, good tactics, good systems, uh, constantly growing and learning. Without those things in your life, how are you going to know not, how to not avoid things? If you don't develop tools, if you don't ask for help, if you don't ask for support, if you don't put yourself in a safe environment where you can do that. And as adults, there's really no excuse to not do that. We can do that. We have the ability to create accessible areas in our lives where those things can is exist. But yet we just allow ourselves to keep believing that same thing we believed when we were little, that it's hopeless. There is no other way. We have to just keep avoiding that negative feeling that takes us nowhere. Right. <laughs> it's kind of, I, I, I love to tell uh, this story, this metaphor uh, to my clients when, when we're talking about avoidance. Uh, it's like trying to use an old tool today moving forward. Like where I want to go, I have to have new tools. So it's kind of like putting, trying to make a five-year-old wear toddler clothes. Like it, 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 they're still in great condition, you know, they're not ruined, but they just don't fit anymore. So we, we just have to kind of like Marie Kondo does with <laughs> the old things that we've got to get rid of when we're tidying up. We just, we honor it. We say, thank you. You helped us through a time that was difficult. Well, we didn't have any other tools. So we honor you for how you served us in that time, but we release you because we, we don't need that anymore. We've outgrown it. So we have to be conscious and understand what things we're doing that no longer serve us. If you're saying, I want to lose weight, but I can't stop eating that food, that's an old, that's an old behavior that, you, that doesn't fit you anymore. Like, do you understand? Like, you're saying, I want this, but this is happening. So it's not getting you where you want to go. You have to change it. Right. right? Yeah. I, Kelly. Um, I just lost my train of thought. She'll get a vacuum in a second. <laughs> totally. Was that avoided? Yes, it was. Oh, that, um, oh, <laughs> one of the things that stuck with me, obviously not very long, um, from last <laughs> week was that there was a constant message and it, it wasn't like beat into you, but it was, it was threaded in a lot of the things they talked about was asking for help. So many of us want to take this journey alone, whatever journey it might be, life, let's just say life, but we're talking about, you know, um, losing weight and things like that. Um, so, you know, I, 
I have sat and done things myself and, you know, tried things and they weren't working. And it's, it's when you engage and ask for that help that you are uplifted. And I mean, we see it in our group. It's happening in Hero Mom Nation right now. Um, you know, where, where people are talking about their struggles and we love, we, we love to celebrate everyone. We love to celebrate all that good stuff, but it's working through the struggles that will get you to that good stuff. And if you stay connected to a group for accountability, whatever it might be, that's where you're going to get the growth. Because if you sit, if you sit in the things that you're struggling with without reaching out for help, it becomes that big story that you create, it becomes the, you know, the little fish that becomes the bigger fish that becomes all of a sudden the biggest shark or whale in the water. And it, it was never meant to be that when it was just that little minnow, if you would have said something, you know, you would have swam off and, and lived your life, you know, but you created this big whole story because you didn't ask for help and you were applying only the bad things, the bad habits, the bad thoughts um, that you knew to that story. So until you mm -hmm. get someone to change that story or write a new chapter for you, then, you know, you're not going to go anywhere and your story is going to keep getting bigger. And, you're, and that emotional, the emotional things that you're dealing with, it just keeps compounding. So I think that is huge, you know, is reaching out for that help because when you get the help, that's when you're going to move forward. That's when you're going to soar and be able to do the things that, that you want to do. And, and, and that's when you fall back, you know, you have that support system to say, Hey, I'm struggling here. What can I do? How, you know, whatever you might need. And then you have this group of people that just gives you a big hug and says, now get moving. <laughs> you know? It's huge. There's that combination of self-reliance, but also community, you know, where you can go to expand, but know that it comes from within it. Ha you have to know you can't be in that place of empowerment if you're expecting something outside of yourself to be the thing that makes the difference. You go outside of yourself for support, for expansion, for wisdom, for knowledge, tactics, but it all happens from within here. And for a lot of us, you know, that's that's exactly where we kind of get stuck is we, we rely on something outside of ourselves to be the thing that makes a change. It can inspire action, but it can't be the thing that does it for you, right? So you, you got to think about that. That third piece, that third point is that awareness point. And so this is, this is for a lot of people really, really hard. Uh, it's such a conscious thing. Consciousness is just like so in this busy world that we live in, in this busy culture of, of achieve, 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 do, 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 do. You know, we, we come, I, I've been talking about this a lot, especially recently, that, you know, our generation raised by parents who... Um, whose parents came out of the depression or who themselves came out of a post-war era where it was all about like recover, rebuild, do the things that we need to to create that secure environment around us to raise our kids in a place that's clean, that has uh, things to offer, opportunities to offer. So it's all about do, 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 do. And we're at that age now or we're of that generation where if we live in first world America, and we understand, like, we can get a job, we can get a car, we can get house, a house we, or a place to live, uh, we can get clothes, we can get food. Like, this stuff is accessible to us so easily, so much so that we don't even have to leave our, our we don't have to leave our phone to get stuff. All we need is an address and a credit card, and we can order everything we need online. Uh, you know, we need income, obviously, but but it's that accessible to us now, whereas before, it's like... You know, you've heard of countries where there are bread lines in the Depression era. They had to stand in line for one single piece of food that might not even feed their whole family. And how do they get just their, their basic needs of food, shelter, clothing? So that's like a long time ago. But yet our culture is still very much in the mindset of doing and achieving, which was necessary for that time. So now we're in that place where we, we want more meaning. We want to feel and experience life more and we're, we're the product of our parents creating a secure world for us yet we are dissatisfied because the doing doesn't we don't need to be focused so much on the doing we need to be focused on the being we need to bring the being and experiencing feeling in more so that 
we have that sort of we we so it's filled in so the purposefulness is filled in and we're not feeling empty trying to fill it with other things like bad foods that give us happy hormones you know the sugars and and all the chemicals in there that are that are designed specifically to shoot off happy hormones in our brain so we turn to these external things to give us that feeling when all we need to go all we need to do is go within and have awareness when when you're craving something you know that brain is going off going you're bored you're scared you're stressed you're something negative is happening go for something that makes you feel good when that goes and you know like you said um, you know like we've heard many times like i put in the in the description the comment i want to lose weight but i don't want to give up the foods and drinks the foods and drinks make you happy so when you want to go for those when you know that they're not going to help you get the health that you want you ask that question what do i really need right now what am i actually needing to feel right now and so if you stop you get aware of that trigger going off and you just pause for a second and you ask that question to yourself you can then change the behavior but without that pause without that awareness that consciousness that that trigger just fired off you go right into the same pattern right kelly right i love the awareness part of it because when your car breaks down you call a mechanic when something happens with your plumbing you call a plumber we don't find the answers to those things in the refrigerator but all this for some reason when something breaks up here or something breaks here we go to the refrigerator and i've done it i you know i've done it a lot um so it's you know it's fine it's the experts it's the accountability it's your support group it's whatever it might be that's what's going to help fix what those broken thought patterns is really what they are is because you think you need something when you you don't you know you have everything you need to live your life we all do i mean we live in a first world country so um you know it it's being aware that this is a moment that you know i, I need to call the plumber i need to call you know the auto shop not the refrigerator i i'll tell you i i'm home by myself a lot and i have downtime so i'm constantly going to the refrigerator nothing changes in there nothing magically appears <laughs> you know it's it's like it's just a force of habit and i have to redirect that because it's just the old thought pattern it's a habit the neural pathway it is totally and it's just it's breaking that and reconnecting it to something else you know so i go outside i you know i do other things i i you know i, I just redirect where my attention's going because i'm not hungry i stop in that moment and say become very aware of what's going on it's like am i hungry no am i bored yes what can i do go do this you know it's like go look at your planner what are you supposed to be doing you know maybe right. it's time to take that dog for an extra walk or whatever it might be i mean not everybody has that freedom but even when i was working in an office i there were times i had to get up and go walk around the building and come back because i didn't mm -hmm. want to eat the donut or the buffet or whatever was there you know it's it's sometimes you struggle with your wants versus needs and that's creating that new thought pattern right and that is an awareness piece like one of the questions i love to ask myself when i'm when i know i'm going to do something that is not going to take me to where i want to go i'll just ask okay what do i actually what am i feeling right now what do i want to feel right now so we can we can think about and dwell on the negative feeling that we're having or we can say how do i want it to be what do i want to experience once we determine that then we say okay to to experience that what do i need to do and so it's always that i always think about this um my mentor brendan um taught me this and he said when we're about to make a choice that we know might compromise if we have enough awareness <laughs> of that what you know i want this but not at the cost of that so if if it doesn't match you know if you know that the choice that you want to make is not going to give you the result you want then that's where the awareness piece comes in right so have that little script for yourself in your head he calls it the self argument plan have that script that runs over and over and over in your head so everything gets filtered through that until a new neural pathway is cut so deep that you it's you can be like rely on the new habit that you've created
but you still got to check in with that, right? Because we're always growing, we're always changing, we're always evolving, we're, we're aspirational, ambitious people. So we need to check in with our processes regularly to make sure they still serve us. We outgrow stuff and we just think, you know, because it's easier. Well, it worked once and it worked many times. And maybe it's worked for years. So we don't question it anymore. But we have to be constant. That's why it's important to do things that are measurable. So you can see. Am I still going like this? It doesn't have to be like this. But it has to at least be going <laughs> up. Right? At some, at some level. <laughs> because our legacy is here. When we're born, we're down here. Our legacy is way up here. If we're not constantly <laughs> climbing... We're not going to get there. No. You don't want to miss that in the end. That's why track things, measurable. That's why planners. That's why systems and processes. So that we can check in, see where we are and how we're doing. I know that seems tedious, but isn't your legacy worth it? Right. But talking about systems and processes, i would totally forgotten about this. It just popped in my head. I didn't recognize it as a system or a process at the time, but now I do. Um, I'm a rule follower. So, you know, if, if the speed limit 35, I'm going 35. But um, <laughs> I used to I used to put a, a closed sign on the kitchen. So I would have an open sign and a closed sign. And because, you know, we're taught that when something's closed, you don't go there. You know, so mm. I, in order to, I think at the time, recreate an, a new neural pathway for myself, I had this closed sign on my kitchen or my refrigerator or whatever it might be. And I, I would see that and be like, oh, it's closed because that's what I was taught. You know, so it, that became a trigger for me. And I totally forgot about that. God, that's funny. <laughs> it's such a good point, though. Like, we've got to set ourselves up for success. I had one client who was like, she's trying so hard to improve her health. But she knows she has an addiction to sweets. She knows it. And she knows it's bad for her. Yet, she had in her mind that at the office, it was important to be hospitable for her clients coming into the office to have a bowl of candy, to welcome them in. And so what, would, what was happening? Were the clients eating those candies? I'd be like, what candies? I didn't put any candies out. And yeah. I would have like, She's like oh, I'm just yeah. <laughs> every time she walked by the bowl, it was like, oh, just grab one, eat it, no big deal, it's just one. You know, and the, the next day like, or later that day, walking on the way back, you know, just grab one. It's no big deal. Just one. One became six, <laughs> you know, which became a whole bag by the end of the week. And then every week just replacing that bowl of candy that she was primarily consuming. So we, if we know that that's a weak place for us, we we have to remove the things that that um, encourage us to make the choices that don't take us to where we want to go. It might not be bad for someone else, or maybe somebody who's complete in command of their consumption of sugars. They can have a bowl of candy right in front of their face all day long and have How? no problem with it. <laughs> Just, right? That's not me. That's not but me either. <laughs> uh, my point is, is that everybody's different. You got to know where your limitations are. So she found a new way to welcome her guests in that didn't have to do with something that set her up to fail. That where she wouldn't have to lean on her willpower all day long or even conscious effort and awareness all day long because that can be exhausting. You know, setting yourself up, even with the tools of awareness, is really awesome, but you don't want to have to make yourself always tap into that uh, large amount of effort. At the same time, um, you do want to set yourself up to be challenged uh, where you intentionally put those challenges into your life so that you have an opportunity to sharpen that tool before something is thrown at you and you need it. So Kelly and I were talking about this the other day. Yeah. I talk about this with clients all the time. You know, you were just given a new sword, awareness. You have this new weapon that you can use in your life. You don't want to just like, oh, cool, I got this new sword. I'm just going to hang it on the wall and look <laughs> yeah. at it and go, I got this new sword. It's awesome. <laughs> Next time a dragon comes, I'm going to grab that sword and I'm just going to... Get that dragon. I wish it worked like that. But if you don't know how to hold that sword, if you don't have the muscles to keep that sword up strong when that dragon comes or how to wield it or how to swing it, then you're, you're taking a lot of chances. So we intentionally put challenges in our way. Oh, okay, that's how you swing it. If I swing it this way, then that's the reaction. If I, if I go like that, then the result will be like that. Okay, I got it. 
And you do that a whole bunch of times so that when that dragon does come, you're like, grab the sword and it's just like, it's like breathing. It just happens. It's automatic. You're, you're proficient with the weapon that you've been given. So there's that combination of stuff. But having a bowl of candy yeah. when you're addicted to sugar in your office is just foolish. Like it's just setting you up to fail, not to win. Right. Like going out to a restaurant, practicing that sword and saying no to the dessert table or to the dessert tray. That's a really good um, example of being able to practice that sword. Hey, Ken. Hey, Sean. Thank you guys for hopping on. Yeah, so these are the things that we uh, share with our hero moms where we bring in some of our eating plan uh, for our, our hero mom diet, like the ladies who are going through the challenge and documentary right now using this plan where we set them up with, we give them the sword, the shield, the armor, all the things that they need and the, and the, and the way that they use them and the opportunities to practice that. But we also bring in all that awareness piece and explain, you know, what's going on with addiction and avoidance <clears throat> so that they have, their, you know, they're, they're, being able, they're being equipped from all sides with support. So when they turn around, it's not just them fighting the dragon. There's a whole bunch of us right there with them. And that's a cool feeling. To fight that dragon. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> so like a hero mom army. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we hope that you guys enjoyed that. We'd love to hear your comments. Um, about, you know, how you deal with, uh, you know, wanting to get healthier or improve your health uh, without giving up things that you love, like the foods and drinks that you love. Like, how do you manage that? We'd love for you guys to share that with us um, so that everybody who's listening, everybody who struggles with that can glean from your wisdom. If you have any questions from the things that we've shared with you guys, please put that in the comments too. We love it when you guys I ask know, questions. I know. And one real quick thing is, you know, creating good meals, you know, you can create the same type of meal using, you know, good ingredients. And our, our Michelle Royale Vidal is excellent at doing that. She has great cookbooks that, I mean, have recipes that are out of this world, super easy. It's just giving a little plug for her and for that because it's, <laughs> it makes this whole process that much easier. You know, that's another thing is creating processes that make it easier for you, not harder. Yeah. I would say that in, uh, in the Hero Mom arsenal, that would be another really powerful weapon yes. that we have uh, and that we provide. <clears throat> Jody says, I like that. Fighting the dragon together. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so important. So important. You need that backup, man. You need your wingmen or women or Hero Moms or however. You know, don't ever try to fight the dragon by yourself. Mm -hmm. Have, have support. Super important. Yes. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on this Thursday. Thank you. We're not going to be back on till Tuesday. So we'll see you guys on Tuesday. We hope you have an awesome, amazing, wonderful weekend. Again, thanks, Steve. Thanks for hopping on, you guys. We appreciate you so much. Mwah. Have an awesome weekend. Have a great day.